love that you are back with us for our afternoon sessions and we're going to keep this thing moving next up is stephanie barnes i'm so excited that she's here with us we're going to go ahead and bring her up to the stage so that she can turn her camera on and get ready she's already ready they all are all ready y'all they ain't got to get ready stephanie barnes is here <laughs> and she's speaking to us on the topic your pain has a purpose your pain has a purpose. <laughs> Stephanie, the stage is yours. Hello, 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 everyone. How y'all doing today? Thank you, Cheryl, for that introduction. My name is Stephanie, also known as your girl, Steph B Speaks. And I have a small nugget to drop with you all today, okay? So I was sitting on my patio, on my, on my deck last Saturday, and I was like, God, what are we going to talk about? You know, because your pain has a purpose. That's a very broad that's a very broad subject that can go either way. So I'm like, God, what are we going to talk about? And when I say we, I always ask God, God, I need you to decrease me that you may increase because I don't want to be seen because people see me, they're just going to see a mess. But when they see you, Father, they will submit to you and know that's my confirmation. She told, he's talking to me through her. Okay. So I'm like, God, what are we going to talk about for, you know, for next Saturday? So it dropped in my spirit Father's Day. And I'm like, okay, this reminds you last Saturday, you know, last Sunday was Father's Day. So I'm like sitting there like, okay, well, that's tomorrow. What about Father's Day? So then he dropped it, it dropped in my spirit about my father, right? So I remember having this conversation with my father. Um, I was driving home. I was working at the hospital at the time. I was like in my 30s and I was driving home and it was like late in the middle of the night. And my father was never one. My father was a hustler and a grinder. I don't even know if he knew the definition of sleep. Right. So it was like, I didn't even, you know, just for him to have that time to talk to me to go home. And at the time, let me just state this. He was dealing with a medical illness as well. So at the time, um, he, I mean, we just, you know, I'm driving home and driving home and I'm like, okay, what is, you know, like, why is he talking to me this long? Because when I get in the house, I'm going to sleep. We're going to cut this off, right? Because it was a long day. So then I'm laying there, I get in the house and I lay down and I'm like, okay, he still hasn't cut this conversation off. It was around 2.30 in the morning, 2.30 in the morning for the very first time, I heard my father say, Stephanie, I love you. And I was like, wow, this is weird because I've never heard him say that before. I never even heard anyone saying that they heard him say that before. My father loved you more through actions. You called him, he coming. You know what I'm saying? He, he just loved to serve people. He just loved, he was a people person and I am too. So to hear the words love, you know, to come from him, I was like, wow, this is weird, but okay. And saying it back to him. So then to go on the other side, I didn't live in a household where you have a mother and father in the same household. So I didn't know what it was for relationships to see the lovey dovey. So a lot of my relationships, I learned off of TVs and movies, right? So my mom's side, they really never talked about loving each other until I got like in my 40s. I never even heard them say the words, I love each other. I love you, right? So it was like, okay, well, this love thing that I see in the movies, I want that kind of love. But see, that type of love ended up leading me to my domestic abusers because I didn't know what it was to, you know what I'm saying, to have. I didn't know what it was to have that love or that fatherly love right there. I didn't really start hanging around him until I was like 13 or 14. So just to hear him say that, I mean, just it was it was just amazing. But the, on the flip side of that, not only was that the first time I heard my father say that, but on August 22nd, 1999, later on that day, that was the last time I heard my father say that because he eventually died later on that day. Okay. So that lets you go, that lets you know, okay, with me personally speaking, when your pain has a purpose, right? When your pain has a purpose, when your pain of domestic abuse, let me say it like this, when your pain of domestic abuse, not one, but two, when your pain has a purpose of domestic abuse, that's two of them, right? When your pain of drug addiction has a purpose, when your pain of loneliness has a purpose, when your pain of depression has a purpose, when your pain of being arrested and serving jail time has a purpose, when your pain of rejection has a purpose, when your pain of loneliness have a purpose. Am I talking to anybody out there? 
it? Because if you're still breathing on this earth, guess what? I know you, you might not have had the same type of pain, but I know you've endured some pain. So even the pain of a loved one, a parent, the pain of even lose, losing a loved one during especially this pandemic, when it has a purpose, you have to tap into that thing and say, you know something? I can't let that pain stop my purpose. Because see, like me, I'm not here to serve me. I'm here to serve you. I'm a people person. I love to serve people. I love to inspire. I love to empower. So coincidentally, now here's the kicker. When I start thinking about it, like coincidentally, my father died at the age of 50. But at the age of 50, God allowed me to just reach back and grab that same torch of hustle and grind and serve people and love people. At the age of 50, he took me from working a nine to five job to being to writing a book. And before I started to write the book, I had to first heal, right? I had to forgive myself. So instead of having people in my ears and worrying about who telling me they love me and who telling me they don't love me and who walked away and who's here and who's not here, I had to lift my eyes into the hills from which come in my help because my help come from the Lord and that's scripture. You can look that one up, okay? So when you look to God and say, God, what is it that you want me to do? You soon learn that your pain has a purpose. Psalms 121, thank you for dropping that, Leona. But your pain Pain soon serves. You know that your pain has a purpose to serve. It's not about what I've been through. I don't know if you've even been through some of the things that I listed there. So it's not about that. But like I said, at the age of 50, I end up writing, going from a nine to five job and end up writing my very first book. Okay, not only been writing my first book, becoming a one-time best-selling author, but a two and working on my third one to become a third and many more. My one nugget I want to live, I want to lead with you. When you decide, and it's all a mindset, when you decide to forgive yourself and heal, when you decide to make the first step, the second step will reveal itself. You don't have to worry about, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? No, just make the first step. Trust your intuition. Talk to God and know that your pain has a purpose. Because right now, I'm standing on a stage speaking to millions domestically and international um, because Dr. Cheryl Wood, who needs no introduction, made it happen. And God designed it that I cross paths with her again for this moment right here. So Dr. Cheryl, I thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Thank you for allowing me to just have my name connected. When your name is connected, honey, listen, you're doing some things and going somewhere. That's when you know that you're not allowing people to be here. Because when people get here, it starts to worry you here. And if your heart is really where it's supposed to be with God and you're doing it for the pure nature of just loving people and doing things, you don't have to worry about what these are saying here. Because you're going to keep walking and you're going to have tunnel vision and like you know something y'all say what you want to say i am enough you are enough you are unstoppable there is nothing that you can handle when you place it in the hands of god again dr cheryl thank you for this time thank you for this opportunity i am ecstatic just to be on this stage right now i don't want to leave but i gotta go but i love each and every one of you know that you are enough you're built for this and you know what on top of that I also learned that my voice has a choice and your voice does too. So you all work, walk in your purpose because all that pain you're going through, find some type of motivation and be creative with it and ask the Holy Spirit, what do I need to do with this pain? Because this is going to serve God and watch how you flow and grow. Level up. I love y'all. I'm your girl, Stephanie, also known as Stephanie Speaks. And you can reach me at globalvisionprod at gmail.com and all over social media at globalvisionprod. I love y'all. Dr. Cheryl, it's back to you. And I'm looking forward to doing more jobs and things, projects with you, okay? <laughs> Got me swept up here, girl. These lights, camera, action. <laughs> Uh, let me tell you something. You don't, you don't understand how this, like, it makes my heart leap. Um, just to hear Stephanie's story, she's on another platform with us and shared some of her story, which is a little different from today. And it's like, every time I get a little more insight into who she really is, but the, the crazy, ironic, divine part of it is we used to work together. Yes. In corporate America. Did y'all hear yes. what Yes. Yes. Like, yes. So when I tell you it's been a journey, I was sitting at a desk as a legal secretary still, y'all, when we met. 
Look at God. Look what Look he at was God. You said, it perfectly. Look at God. you said it perfectly. You said when you take the first step, it's like the next one will just organically appear, but you got to take the step so the next one can show up. And here we are all those years later. And it's like things came full circle. And when I first saw her name, I was like, I think this is Stephanie. I used to work. We used to work together at XYZ company. And then I was like, you, we did used to work together. right? <laughs> and here we are both sharing our voices. So I love you. I'm just so girl. When I tell you, my heart is just so full seeing you in your element and sharing your story and just taking it to the next level. Like seriously, just from sister to sister, I'm so happy for you and so excited for where God is taking you. And when she said, get out of this, cause, cause when they hear people here, it hit here, but you gotta leave this to him. So you gotta get eliminate all the chatter and people that's in your ear telling you who you ain't, who you can't be, what you can't accomplish. Like you was dropping some nuggets, wasn't she y'all? Come on, give Stephanie some love, some hugs, some hearts, some flowers, some fire, some bombs, <laughs> some hand claps and snap snaps in the chat for dropping those juicy nuggets. I love you, sis. Thank you so much for being here. Mm, Y'all, woo.